Check, check. No. Check. All right, we'll get underway as soon as we get the mics lit up. There we go. Yeah, check. Check. Very good. Thank you. All right, welcome everybody. This uh, meeting of Board of Commissioners of the Town of Waxhaw, regular meeting April 25, 2023, is now called to order. And uh, first off, if you would please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a brief moment of silence. Adoption of tonight's agenda first off, but I understand we have a request for an amendment to it. Uh, Town Manager Wells? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Requesting that the board amend the agenda to add an item under Section F, Recognitions, the F2, Recognition of Nasiri Development LLC and Waxhaw PD. Very good. All right, any uh, questions on that at all? We can have a motion then. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Very good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, uh, Barb, we have uh, nothing under D, general public comments. We'll drop down to the consent agenda. So can I have a motion to uh, adopt tonight's consent agenda as published? Motion. Great. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now we'll go to the, the change, recognitions. First up, Chief Greg Collins. Welcome again. Good to see you. See everybody this evening. Well, as part of our ongoing intro, we have a little extra intro this evening. We have our, our newest police officer here. This is Josh Rushing. Uh, Josh comes, from us, comes to us from the Union County Sheriff's Office. He graduated in 2006 from Sun Valley High School. Did you know Mulligan back then? Okay. <laughs> well, see where that connection is. Um, Rushing and his wife have two amazing children, daughter Paisley and son Denver, and I believe they are up to three dogs in the house now. Three dogs. So i try to find out a little something, something. Yeah. So uh, we are very glad to, to have them, and we'll do the swearing in now. I believe you're going to do the swearing in. I can if you'd like me to. Great. Thank you. Thank you. We are. We're going to, you know, I like to take this opportunity that um, all the officers that are here reaffirm their oath of office when we swear a new, new officer. So first off, I'm going to ask you to repeat after me, but I'm going to pause a little bit and all of you uh, state your name. So this is the oath of office, law enforcement officers. I, Joshua Russian, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, or affirm, or affirm, that I will be alert, that I will be alert, and vigilant, and vigilant, to enforce the criminal laws of this state, to enforce the criminal laws of this state, that I will not be influenced in any manner, that I will not be influenced in any manner on account of personal bias or prejudice on account of personal bias or prejudice that I will support and maintain that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States the Constitution and laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina not inconsistent herewith 
not inconsistent herewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge. That I will patiently and impartially discharge. And execute the duties. And execute the duties. As a police officer. As a police officer. According to the best of my skill. According to the best of my skills. Abilities. Abilities. And judgment. And judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. If you can get a picture there together. Thank you, Chief. Town Manager Wells, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. I'll come up here and I'll ask uh, Mo from the Siri Development LLC to come on up here. And while he's reluctantly making his way up here, I think, but uh, I'll buy him an ice cream. I'll tell a little story about an incident that happened here in town that uh, I think most everybody in this room is aware of. It was Friday, April 14th, uh, unfortunately very late in the afternoon, which happens sometimes on uh, Fridays. And we had a uh, tanker truck that got stuck on the railroad tracks at NC-16. And thankfully, this is a, uh, a fairly unique event. It, it happens every so often, like once every couple of years, but it, it happens regularly enough that, that Todd, our public service director, had quite the recollection of several that have happened. But this truck got good and stuck at uh, roughly 4, 3.30 or 4 in the afternoon on a Friday, right as the busy time of the uh, afternoon was starting at that intersection. So quickly, our PD, got to the scene to control the traffic and also on the scene was Mo who happened to be doing his construction project uh, right there uh, in the really next door in the vicinity there our uh, tap project and he uh, had the perfect equipment after a few tries to uh, come out and give that uh, truck a little nudge forward after strategizing with our uh, PD about how they maybe could get that truck unstuck. So just wanted to uh, give some kudos to our PD for being on the scene so quickly and mitigating that situation as best they could and for Mr. Nasiri for having the equipment right there and also his willingness to help in that situation which if he hadn't have been there to help along with our PD then the tow truck was called and it was going to take you know probably another hour for that to get removed from that intersection so he really saved a lot of heartache that evening here at Waxhaw so just wanted to make sure that he was recognized along with our PD and how much we appreciate him and his uh, community service there at that moment in time. Well, that's great. We certainly appreciate that. I did see the pictures just after, and it was a long uh, tanker truck that's hung up across the tracks there. So, again, a team effort. We have a private contractor that's doing work for us as well, and our PD right there, right Johnny on the spot, literally. And so, uh, again, this is, again, the relationships that this town and this staff is building along with uh, everybody here involved in the town to come to the rescue. Thank goodness, I think the first order of call is to uh, call the uh, railroad company and tell them there's something across the tracks. I think that's the, the policy and procedure. So that happened, everybody mobilized. So Mo, I want to thank you for that personally. I greatly appreciate it. This was unnecessary, but greatly appreciate uh, taking the time and effort for this. But without everybody's help, and I mean everybody from Ashley, just happened to be right on the corner, everybody on the phone making the proper phone calls and uh, the officer showed up. It was just a combination without, a combination of everybody, all the parties, especially uh, public service, everybody had to be there to make it happen. 
we were just lucky enough to be there to make it happen. And I think anybody else in that scenario would have done the exact same thing. So I don't think we, any of us did anything remarkable. We were just fortunate enough to have the tools to be able to do it. So uh, on, my behalf, on behalf of myself, my crew, and all parties, uh, thank you. Right, and you're welcome. And thank your crew. And by the way, this project is just going wonderful. It's moving along fast, and we're looking forward to that being completed uh, sooner rather than later. We'll all Thank celebrate. You. Thank you, Jeff. All right, move over to the first presentation tonight. Mr. Kelly, you're up. James Kelly, Traffic and Transportation Project Manager. Welcome to the podium. Thank you. What you have for us tonight? Critical intersections, that's your request. So first off, I just want to, before we begin this presentation, I just kind of want to make it clear that, oh, thank you, John. I see if I can fix it. You might want to get close to the closest one to you. Okay. That spring's broken on that, Jeff. Where's the duct tape when you need it? Good evening, everyone. My name is James Kelly. I am the town's traffic transportation project engineer. I'm looking forward to working with the town. But this is more so, this first presentation tonight is more so um, an informational type item, just to bring awareness to the town citizens uh, about what's going on, what you can do to help us uh, with the town. So again, this is an informational item to bring awareness to the survey in hopes that our residents will share their thoughts on intersections where they want to see future roadway improvements and intersection improvements. So first up, the Critical Intersections Program. Waxall is partnering with Union County to support data collection and public outreach efforts. We are ultimately seeking input from our residents to help in the prioritization of future intersection improvements across the town and across Union County. It is currently live. Our survey link is there. It's metroquestsurvey.com slash IC6, that's an L as in Lima, 6E. So it's currently open for you to access, to provide your input, and that closes on May 5th of this year. So just to kind of walk you through what you should expect to see as you're going throughout this survey, it's really a five part um, form fill out. So the first part is really just an overall welcome, kind of explains the survey. Part two talks about the overall preferences. So what should we prioritize? So we're looking at location, we're looking at safety considerations, congestion, supporting economic activity, and bicycle and pedestrians. The third part is really just a, hey, here are intersections that are already funded. Um, and you can go in and click and drag an option to where say, yes, this, is, this intersection definitely needs improvement. We definitely need uh, improvement here. Or you can go back and say, well, hey, this intersection is funded, but it may not necessarily need improvement. The fourth and most important part of the survey is where you can actually identify problem intersections. So what does this all consist of? Really, it's the combination of intersections across the entire Union County, not just town of Waxall. So for example, if you're seeing delay problems up there at Newtown and Providence Road, where the Publix is, and that's backing up into our town, Note that that intersection is actually not within the town of Waxall limits, but if we identify that as a problem intersection, we can better coordinate with Union County and the surrounding towns who do govern that region. So this will help us. And it's not just um, intersections. You can identify walking, cycling, congestion, and overall economy and safety issues as well. Finally, the fifth part is optional if you want to provide some information. We do like if you could at least identify the municipality. So if you're in town of Waxhaw, identify that municipality. That will help us greatly. So just overall, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Good. Any thoughts, comments for our presenter? I think it's a great thing that we're doing, again, engaging more and more of our citizenry to understand what we face every day. So uh, that input's going to be critical. Perfect. We're good. Well, thank you all. All right. Thank you very much.
All right, at this time we're going to move into our public hearing section. So if I could have a motion to open the public hearing, please. Motion to open the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. All right, we're in. All right, Miss Janet, you're up. Welcome to the podium again. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the public hearing tonight is for the annexation petition for, well, oh, that's not the right one. I will just continue. Um, it is uh, for the annexation for the uh, Fister property that you heard about at your last meeting. Um, it is, um, Parcel that's located on Waxhaw Marvin Road, right between the Curitan and Quellen subdivisions. It's a 1.1 acre parcel that is a donut hole, um, so we'll be filling in that. Um, section 160A 33 is the process given to us by the state for voluntary annexation. Um, at your last meeting, we went through the first three steps, um, scheduled this public hearing, and tonight we are doing the fourth step, which is holding the public hearing to allow residents or property owners an opportunity to be heard. And then we'll hear your board decision at your next meeting on May 9th. Uh, the only requested action this evening is to close the public hearing. Once you've heard from anybody here who wants to speak on this. All right. Barbie, uh, nobody signed up uh, tonight on specifics? Okay, very good. All right, so. Uh, just make that simple. This is again uh, the slide up there is the wrong slide, but it is the donut hole, a small one acre parcel uh, on this property. So we've seen this before. It's, it was in your packet. So, unless there's any other thoughts and comments on it, I'll look for a motion to close the public hearing. Oh, Charlie? Sorry, Mayor. Uh, the correct statutory reference should be 16831. The reason I say that, 33 is a part of what the General Assembly has already. Uh, put a moratorium on. So we, 31 is voluntary. You are voluntary correct. Petition. I changed it on my last slides, and I already <laughs> uh, did change it. Let's make sure the record speech. reflects that we're coming under 168.31. Okay, very good. Thank you for that update. I appreciate that, Charlie. All right. So, let's see if we got where we were. Motion to close the public hearing. Uh, motion. A motion to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. All right. We're releasing that. We'll jump down to old business. Second reading of the proposed ordinance. So we have Miss Ashley. Welcome again, Ashley. Ashley is our downtown director. And the floor is yours. Thank you guys for having me again. Again, tonight will be the approval of our downtown sidewalk dining ordinance. So we'll do a little bit of background again. We don't currently have any sidewalk dining guidelines on the books. Um, with our new streetscape that Mo is working on, it really presents a good chance for us to formalize all of our guidelines. It will also help improve our accessibility and walkability throughout downtown. Um, so like we talked about a couple weeks ago, these are our requirements. Um, we did update the ordinance to add in um, that solid, the umbrellas need to be solid color. Um, so that has been added into the ordinance there. Again, the application will require um, a description and images of the barriers, tables, chairs, and umbrellas. Um, we'll use that to kind of keep an eye on what, how the colors look. Um, and if we need to start uh, requiring certain colors, that's something we can add in. Are there any questions about the ordinance? Any thoughts, comments? I know last time uh, the color was one thing or the solid uh, umbrella thing. Any uh, other thoughts, comments on it? I'll get off the hook uh, fairly easy tonight. <laughs> All right, so with that, I'll look for a motion to approve this ordinance uh, as it has been amended, but approve the ordinance as it's presented here tonight for us. So motion up, please. I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance number OR ORD 2023013, establishing regulations for sidewalk dining on North Main Street between North Providence Road and Hicks Street and South Main Street between South Church Street and McKibben Street. Very good. Thank you. All right, that that uh, recommendation, that motion is up. So if I, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, none opposed. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, we'll jump down to new business tonight. Solid waste contract renewal with Waste Pro of North Carolina. Town Manager Jeffrey Wells. Thank you, Mayor. 
the staff initiated discussions with Waste Pro several months ago to discuss contract renewal. Waste Pro has been providing solid waste services to the town since their acquisition of RCS a few years back. The current service contract is set to expire at the end of this fiscal year, which is June 30th. The new contract will start July 1st and extend to June 30th, 2028. The contract can automatically extend an additional two years thereafter with a 180-day notice to terminate. Solid waste, recycling, and yard waste services will all remain the same on the same schedule. Waste Pro will continue its Monday pay for bulk pickup schedule throughout town. The Public Services Department will pick up smaller bulk items with a program that is being formalized. It will take the place of the Friday bulk pickup. The official start date for that will be July. Waste Pro provides the portalettes and hand wash stations for our town events. They also provide the dumpsters at our town facilities. The cost has already been accounted for in the proposed fiscal year 24 budget. The total amount budgeted for the service this upcoming fiscal year will be $1,865,000, and that is accounted for 7,000 residences at a cost of $22.20 per household. The town is happy to move forward with Waste Pro. We maintain a good working relationship with Waste Pro's leadership team, who is here this evening, and they have a, a short presentation that they would like to uh, provide to you. And that is Ted Good and Melinda Barkley. Just want to introduce their leadership to, uh, to our board. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Mayor Board, town staff, we appreciate the opportunity the invite to be here this evening and speak to you on behalf of Waste Pro. Um, Ted and I have had two short years with this company, but we are so pleased with the dynamic uh, environment that we're a part of and we're pleased to be a part of the continued partnership with Voice Pro. Kind of move quickly through some slides, and I think I have the button here. So, Voice Pro is one of the largest, um, fastest growing companies in the Southeast. We're a privately held company, and we operate in, in this local area since 2011. We are having projected revenue growth of about $1 billion uh, at the end of this year. We have 80 locations that we operate, and we have three of those facilities that are in the greater Charlotte area, one in Monroe. Uh, we have over 300 municipal contracts, and we serve over 2,800 uh, collection vehicles. We have over 2 million residential customers, and uh, we have over 100 uh, commercial businesses. And we're excited to say I have that number of 3,700 employees we actually just excelled that and we're at 4,200. So a little update I need to do on the presentation. So this is a map of North Carolina. We have 22 contracts that we service in around this greater area. We have three that are over in the Western North Carolina, but you'll see our footprint there in the center area. So we're very happy to still have and be a partner uh, with Waxhaw, uh, Mr. Buckley was with us last night, and we we're very pleased to have been awarded uh, the town of Matthews. So. Talk about our employee retention. Hey guys, I'm Ted. I'm the division manager at the, the local uh, Waste Pro in, in Monroe. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work with you guys for the last two years. Very sorry, very happy, very happy to work with you guys for the last two years. Uh, one of the things that I started when, whenever I came into the waste industry is consistency, right? It, it, it's all about keeping the same person on the same route uh, running in the same truck, right? And when you do that, you, you get consistent and you make residents happy because you can pick their stuff up, right? So employee retention is huge for us. Keeping the same people means I can keep them in the same truck and on the same route, right? Um, so some of the things that we do, obviously, we, we provide medical, dental, optical. Uh, we do have incentive programs that, that we use uh, and utilize. We uh, have a safety bonus that is if you're accident and injury free for three years, the owner of the company writes you a $10,000 check. So that's, that's good to keep people accident and injury free as well as property damage, right? Uh, and then we're always looking to advance people's career paths. So we bring 
drivers or not drivers but helpers in and we help them get their CDL and uh, move them forward in the company right so that's what we call our cohort program we'll send them down to Florida some of you may or may not know that the CDL program now as you now requires you to sit to a week-long class uh, most of it at your expense right but Waste Pro will work with the with the helpers and we'll get them down to Florida and we'll get them through the class and it's about four thousand dollars to to get through that that, that Waste Pro um, invests in the uh, the new team member right so I do want to talk about our Trek E program so when a resident calls in and says hey we have uh, bulk to pick up on Friday we will put this in what's called our Trek E program and it will log the address and, and uh, what we are picking up. And this goes for carts as well. If, if you have a new resident or an old resident that needs a cart or a cart swap, we can put it into the Track E program and it will uh, track it all the way through from when we initiate it all the way through to close. And then we can go back and reference it at any time. Something I do want to talk about is we have the call center that is in Monroe. So we have a manager, a supervisor, and nine um, CSRs, customer service reps, that are able to answer the phone live, right? We started about six months ago to where you have the option to uh, have a call back, right? So you don't want to sit there on the phone and wait. You can just hit the button, and whenever you hang up, it puts you in the queue. And whenever you come up in the queue, it will automatically dial you back and put you to the next available rep. Uh, we do have uh, diversity with English as well as Spanish speaking. Uh, we just promoted a driver into a supervisor, and he is bilingual. Very helpful. Very helpful. Um, so let's talk about our safety program. We, we want to help the guys and girls get to that $10,000 safety uh, bonus. Some of the things that we do is the GPS tracking. Well, the GPS tracking, not only GPS is the trucks, but there's a camera system that's in there and it has, a truck can have anywhere between two and eight cameras. Uh, this helps with uh, property damage, right? So you may or may not have hit a mailbox, right? We can go back, we can look and see if we actually did hit the mailbox. Uh, and we can address it that way. It also helps us with, with our drivers, where if we have hard brakes, we get an alert. Uh, had one today where it was a hard brake and a possible collision is what came through on my email. Obviously, I'm gonna open that up really quickly. Well, we had a tractor trailer that tried to come over in front of one of our guys and he did have to hit the brakes hard. So it gives us an opportunity to coach them on what they did right or what they did wrong. And this guy did something right, so I patted him on the back, told him good job, and let's keep moving, right? Um, Uh-oh. Okay, we're done. <laughs> so, there we go. Oh, we might try to get that back. I was going to say, as far as from the, oh, you're already back. The camera system. One of the wonderful things about our camera system, and we're very excited that you guys have a new police officer that has joined you this evening, but uh, we do work in tandem with the local police. So be with that system that we have, we're able to try to help in any way. So please make sure uh, we are utilizing that resource. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've, we've done that uh, quite a few times. Um, kind of already went over this, right? We did, we did purchase RCS back in 2018, which we took over the contract. And, uh, we provide all the services that you see uh, on the, on the uh, screen. Changes in the town. So I, I did want to talk about this really quickly. So when we took over, we were servicing a little bit on Monday, a lot on Wednesday, a lot on Thursday, and a ton on Friday. And what I mean by that is the number of routes that we ran. Uh, and it would start out with a couple routes here, three routes there, and then on Friday it was nine routes. And from a routing perspective and from a staffing perspective, that's tough. Uh, so what we did is we went and we sat down uh, with Jeff and, and we said, hey, look, here's, here's what we would like to do. We'd like to propose a reroute. And we did. And when we did this, it leveled everything out where we have two trash trucks that run Monday through Friday. We have one recycle truck that runs Monday through Friday. We have a uh, yard waste truck that runs Monday through Friday. That's four people that's consistent, right? 
we're able to provide that service for, for you. And I'm very happy that you guys allowed us to do that. And I think it worked out the best for all of us, right? Uh, one of the other enhancements that we did is uh, the bulk program that we have. The bulk program prior to me getting here was, uh, you know, I'm going to use your, use your term, bulk again, right? So we would do twice a year, we would, we would set bulk out. We would come through and we would have anywhere between six to 13 trucks that would run it was supposed to be for a couple days end up running for two to three weeks and you have bulk setting around everywhere so we proposed hey let's go to this program and i think it's been working relatively well right we, we try to keep everybody happy so thank you for doing that with us um, so what am I missing? we appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening <laughs> Absolutely. and uh, share a little bit about our company uh, with each of you and to be able to uh, continue our partnership. So thank you for your time. And thank you for coming forward and being part of our presentation tonight to un have us all understand some of the changes that have been made. We have certainly heard from our staff, our town manager, in the negotiation process of this. So we're very pleased that we all came to a good um, consensual arrangement so I appreciate you guys doing that I know that you've been there town manager and I talk often I know you've been there whenever he's had a question any staff and so far I've heard you know very very little on the complaint side so I think it's uh, it's working well and I know that you guys will step up if there is a challenge to it so I appreciate that Jeff they are in just really daily conversations with our public services department so I have a great relationship and of course I've had the privilege of, of being part of that uh, from the time to time that I get involved but quite frankly I don't have to get involved very often at all to really just for contract negotiation but they both handle the customer service portion exceptionally. Very good. Well, thank you for that. Any thoughts, comments to share? Anybody? All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate that. All right, we'll move down to the next item. Motion, motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion to I'm approve sorry. the we, contract. i got to organize this uh, differently for myself. So, all right, we'll look for a motion on this one. So this one's a motion to approve. So I'll make, a, I'll make a motion to approve the contract renewal with WastePro for five-year term beginning July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2028, and authorize the town manager to execute said contract with WastePro. All right, motion is up. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you for all involved in the conversation. So right, now we'll move down to the next one here. All right, uh, facade grant. Um, on, uh, let's see, we have motion on this one. This is Janet back up again. Yes, sir. Okay, so I am here now to talk about the facade improvement grant request. Um, and this request is a petition from John Giz, who is of South Stone Properties, acting as the agent for the property owner, uh, for the front facade of the buildings located at 103 through 109 West South Main Street, also known as the A.W. Heath Company Store 2. Uh, the property is located on West South Main between South Church and South Broome Streets. <coughs> The following history of the property is a summary from the National Register inventory as well as information provided by the State Historic Preservation Office and the applicant. Uh, the A.W. Heath stores form one of the most architecturally and historically significant commercial complexes in Union County. The main two-story red building was constructed about 1898 to house a general store and as the um, space, as Mr. Heath needed more space for his growing mercantile trade. He constructed the adjacent one-story commercial block in 1904. The building was divided into four identical storefronts, all part of the A.W. Heath Company. The original signage painted on the recessed brick panels above each entry recalls the original function of each unit. You can see that better here in this photo. Um, the buff iron-spotted brick is unusual in this area of North Carolina. The color suggesting that the brick was produced in the Midwest, and the unique size of the brick indicates it was most likely from Indiana. Uh, the brick is laid using a thin butter joint of colored mortar. The recessed entrances are flanked by glass, plate glass windows framed by cast iron pilasters. 
and pattern brickwork distinguishes each individual store unit. Three of the original storefronts remain unaltered at the time of the nomination to the National Register. Um, after Heath's death, the firm remained in operation under the supervision of his son-in-law, and the company ceased operations in 1966. At present, the commercial building houses Capricci's Restaurant, Provisions Waxhaw, and the Bean and Bell Art Studio. The A.W. Heath Complex is a contributing building in the National Historic District and was designated a local historic landmark in October of 1987. The proposed work to the front facade is considered major and requires a certificate of appropriateness from the Waxhaw Historic Preservation Commission and the commission unanimously approved the COA at their April 13th meeting. We've broken the um, facade project into three parts. The first part is the upper portion of the brick needs to be repointed because water is seeping into the building. Um, the contractor will use a grout pad and wet sponge due to the extremely tight joints and mortar joints will match in texture, width, profile, and color and the mortar will be high, high in lime content to allow sufficient expansion and contraction of the older masonry. Um, if there is any impact to the original painted signage, the paint will be touched up with matching white paint. So the second part of the project is to replace the entrance doors at 107 West South Main, the entrance to the provisions. Um, and this project started when the tenant asked for a new front door. As we researched the history of the building, we found out that this section was altered sometime in the 1940s to house a movie theater. So the original uh, plate glass, or 10 foot glass doors that you can see on this photo uh, were replaced with these smaller six foot doors. The glass transom above was replaced with wood um, and that was so done to block the sunlight from streaming into the movie theater. So as we talked about replacing the doors, um, we chose, we asked about whether we could replace it with 10 foot doors again, um, instead of just going with a, a like door. And during a meeting about the project, Mr. Giz revealed that the original doors, complete with the original hardware, were stored down in the basement of the antique mart. Oh. So, uh, those doors will be restored, trim will be cut to match the original, the doors and trim will be painted to match the other store entrances. An attempt will be made to rework the original door handle and lock so that they can be reused. Um, if they can't be reused, then a new set as close in look to the original uh, will be used. The wood panel transoms above the doors will be replaced with glass and the wood flooring at the entrance alcove will be removed and replaced with concrete that will slope away from the doors. Uh, part of the issue with those existing front doors is that that wood swells and, and uh, holds the water and then the door is hard to open and close. And then the final portion of the project will be um, to replace the wood panels here above the display windows with glass to um, bring it back to the original look from when the building was constructed. So the applicant and the tenant have provided um, multiple contractor quotes for the work. And there are, is an update to this slide. Um, every year, well this year we've got $50,000 approved for the grant fund. Um, and we were down to about 1,500, but that Michael Ryan Realty project just completed and um, he was approved for almost $17,000 and the actual cost was around $9,000, so um, instead of being at $1,400, uh, we'll have about $9,200 left in that fund balance. Um, and then, unfortunately, Mr. Giz was unable to be here tonight, but he did ask me to read this letter to you. Um, and it says, Dear Board of Commissioners, thank you for your time on the agenda for this important project for 103-107 West Main Street in downtown Waxhaw. I apologize for not being able to attend this evening as I have a prior commitment. While having the annual structural and building envelope inspections for the block of properties in downtown Waxhaw, it was determined by our building consulting engineer that the top crown of our front-facing brick parapet walls showed signs that several smaller mortar joint cracks were beginning to merge together. 
This merging will eventually lead to one larger forming crack in the mortar each winter that will jeopardize the structural integrity of the brick on that front parapet wall. The repointing and repairs proposed will keep any water from entering these cracks, loosening any more mortar, and returning the wall to its original structural design. While we were working towards presenting the mortar repair and restoration of the parapet wall, our tenants <clears throat> were having problems with the front entrance doors sticking and securing the doors when locking up. They developed a solution for new doors to replace the existing six-foot double doors that were installed about 50 years ago. Working with the building owners and the Waxhaw Planning Department, a proposal to bring back the original 10-foot doors is presented here. The original doors with the original glass have been stored in the basement for more than 50 years. The tenants have found a carpenter that will install the original doors back in place and replace the upper wood panels of the storefront to clear glass, just like when the building was new in 1904. This address was converted into a theater in the 40s and cut down on, to cut down on external light, the owners replaced the upper glass with the wood panels to accomplish their needs at that time. Thank you for your time and consideration on this facade grant project. John Giz, Project Property Manager. Um, so the requested action this evening is a motion <coughs> to approve as presented up to 50% of the actual cost of work, not to exceed $14,550. And I would be happy to answer any questions. It's a good find in the basement again, I guess, huh? We're so excited. Oh, that's, good. that's good. Any... Uh, Comments, thoughts, questions? Be nice to have this one uh, come and get done as well. Any comments? All right, so I'm going to look for a motion. Motion to approve FIP 000001 2023 as presented up to 50% of the actual cost of the work, not to exceed $14,550. Very good. The motion is up. All in favor? Aye. All, right. All the way around. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Janet. Next item up, we have Miss Melody coming up to talk about the endorsement of the Rural Transformation Grant application. Good evening. Good evening. So um, I have the opportunity to speak with you all about uh, some upcoming grant opportunities that the town will be applying for, which we need the BOC support for. Um, but before I go into that, I wanted to share with you the process that we go through to identify whether or not the grants, whether or not we can apply for the grants. So we have a team of staff members that meet on a monthly basis to review grant opportunities to determine whether or not we have projects that fall in line with these grant opportunities. And if we do, we review the requirements to see if we can meet them and then assign out, you know, who's going to handle what. So basically we're working together as a team to successfully apply for these grant opportunities, which is really awesome um, because I feel like we've been very active in this realm. And uh, just as uh, speaking with Leslie with strate Strategics, um, she was very excited to see how active we are in the federal realm as well as the state realm. Um, so the first grant application is the Rural Transformations Grant, which you may remember the town had applied for this grant um, the end of 2022. And so unfortunately we were not awarded this grant. And so staff would like to give another go at it. And I'll explain that in just a minute where that part will be obvious. Um, so this grant is administered by the Department of Commerce and Rural Economic Development Division. Uh, no match is required. So there's 50 million in funds available through this grant, through ARP, which is great. Uh, so the grant supports projects that improve quality of life and attract customers to downtown and eligibility is determined by the rules census tract, which is located south of Highway 75, which is perfect for the project that we have selected. Uh, the average grant award for round two was around 613,000. So you'll notice that our request is around that range, trying to make sure that um, our grant application is competitive. 
So a little bit about the application. We're applying for the downtown park completion of 660600 and $660, dollars. Um, and this is for the amphitheater, seat wall, cover, and sound system of $505,000. Picnic pods of $48,000. Benches, $54,000. Swings, $20,000. Trash cans, $33,600. And so the important thing to note here is that these pieces of the park are currently not funded. Staff is uh, working on either adding to the CIP, which right now the amphitheater is in future years, five plus years out. And then um, the other items are going to be um, funded through community donations. Um, and staff is beginning that work now. So um, the town will have three years to complete the grant requirements um, and funds will be available by reimbursement basis. So after we spend, then we'll be able to get reimbursement. The timeline that we're looking at is tonight we're here asking for your support. And then the submission deadline is next Wednesday, May 3rd. Uh, and then we have a quick turnaround time for the announcements, uh, which will be June 13th. And so I asked Dina today, um, how quickly could we get the amphitheater going, get that running? So she's checking into that because curiosity, you know. Uh, so the request before you tonight is a motion to approve resolution endorsing the Town of Waxhaw's application for the Rural Transformation Grant for $660,000 in $600. All right, so this will be uh, not only, it won't be the first grant for the park that we're going after, the first one we got uh, earlier, um, before we started the park, obviously. So we're in such great shape that we can now go after these things so I think that's been a good effort and I think it was uh, probably wise to uh, take advantage of this given uh, the way the costs have gone up we can offset some of those as well so any questions for our presenter anything Jeff that you wanted to add on it by chance I'll just mention uh, it specifically to the to the amphitheater and, and some of those other items when we were uh, making the when making the decision I recommended that uh, we not do the the cover and shelter part uh, in the the phase two just because I felt like we had got to the point where you know we we're spending enough dollars on that uh, on that park to get it get it open so it was a, a physical prudence decision but of course that doesn't mean that we don't want that uh, uh, opportunity along and so this grant is the perfect opportunity to see if we can uh, go ahead and fill in that missing piece instead of having it on our um, uh, future CIP. Any offset will certainly be welcome so any thoughts comments from anybody around? Commissioner Hall I see you leaning in. Yeah I just had just one question during the, the grant application process if um, if we if there's an option for us to provide maybe attribution to the Department of Com Commerce, if that might make it more interesting for them. Yeah, like this amphitheater is uh, provided by the Department of Commerce. Any other thoughts, comments? All right, I'm going to look again for a motion. Thank you, Melody. I'm going to look for a motion on this one. Who's up? Motion to approve resolution RES 2023012, endorsing the town of Waxhaw's application for a rural transformation grant for $660,600. Very good. The motion's up. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Unanimous again. One more. Brody. Well, 
good luck with all of it. Good luck to us. So, thank you. Appreciate that. All right, I think you're up again as well. You're standing up there again, aren't you? <laughs> all right, go on to the next item, the endorsement of the COPS hiring program grant apps. Entry-level salaries and benefits for two new sworn officer positions. This amount is $250,000. Uh, the reason for this request is the max for the grant award for officer is $125,000 over three years. And so the remainder of the entry-level salaries and benefits um, the town will be responsible for and that becomes our match and that's why it's a odd percentage um, that's the hundred forty four thousand five hundred nineteen dollars and sixty two cents so the town will have five years to fulfill the grant requirements and funds will be available by reimbursement so a couple of considerations with this grant is that salary increases for those employees are not included in this amount and must be budgeted separately and that at the end of the grant period the three-year period the town will have to pick up that salary amount the full amount and then also these new positions must be carried forward for a minimum of 12 months after the grant expires staff recommends keeping those positions long term so the timeline that we're looking at right now, I've sent over the narrative to Leslie and her team to help us with making sure that this grant uh, application is as strong as possible. And she will also be getting uh, letters of support from our federal legislators. Um, and then tonight, of course, we're here before you asking for your support of this grant. And uh, this federal grant is uh, it's a little bit different. It's got two application deadlines. One is May 4th, the second is May 11th. That's a little bit heavier lift. We are probably 90, 95% done with that, so that one's almost ready to go. Uh, awards will be announced in uh, conjunction with the federal fiscal year, which starts October 1st, and um, so we should receive an announcement by September September 30th, and we would plan to budget for these positions in FY 24-25, so that's next fiscal year. And that would just give us a little bit of time to plan for that uh, $144,000. So the motion, um, or the request for tonight, is a motion to approve the resolution endorsing the Town of Waxell's application for the COPS hiring program for $250,000, including match of $144,519.62. Right, very good. I wonder if the chief would like to come up. We heard him do a little bit of a narrative yes, yesterday. Uh -huh. And uh, chief, you can come up. And we uh, met with the attorney general yesterday of the state and uh, a pretty good explanation as well. So just to augment that, um, sure, you sure. can tell us what your program's going to look like. And I'll, I'll touch on our meeting yesterday uh, when I do my um, I was actually a COPS grant officer in 1992 when I was hired uh, in Kinston uh, as part of Bill, President Bill Clinton's rollout of 100,000 officers. And, uh, funny enough to me, I didn't know I was a COPS grant officer until two years later I got this big huge packet from the feds telling me to fill all this stuff out. So if we get this, we're going to make sure our officers know that that's something to, to keep up with. But um, you know, Not to put the wagon before the horse, but next budget year we come around I'll probably be asking for a couple more allocations um, as we all remember the, the uh, pay and staffing study that was done last year shows that 
Waxhaw has one patrol officer for 971 citizens, which is well above the national, av national average. And I did the numbers again the other day based on our estimated population, and now we're at 1,017 officers. Or excuse me, I wish that was. <laughs> 1,017 citizens per patrol officer. However, um, and again, I'll touch base on this here in a, in a few minutes when I, I do my public safety um, presentation, but um, we are addressing that, and I would say addressing it aggressively for a small town like Waxhaw, and we have some hiring going on, and in a few minutes you're going to see uh, our new recruiting video that's going out. So uh, that ratio is going to get a lot better even without the COPS grant, but that would make about a about a 200 person to officer difference if we got both of those positions. So I think it um, spreads the cost down uh, out down the road a little bit, but it gives us some flexibility in what we do for the next fiscal year. So essentially we're going down that road anyway. It's nice to have some financial relief as we travel down that. Absolutely. If someone wants to give us some money to do what we want to do, that's, that's a good thing. All right. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Melody or the chief? All right, so we've talked about this before. I think uh, Commissioner Mori was real active in this a while back, so uh, I'm gonna look for a motion. I make the make motion to approve resolution RES 2023-011, endorsing the town of Waxhaw's application for the COPS hiring program, uh, grant for 250,000 uh, to include the amendment that we spoke about. Very good. All right, the motion is up. All in favor? Aye. All the way around thank you um, real quick just a big thanks to mulligan and dex for all their help with this i couldn't have done it without it it's a lot of work yeah. grant writing is a lot of work all right thank you melody appreciate that all right next up we have mr kelly is back up with us again to consider for adoption the resolution uh, to initiate comprehensive transportation plan amendment process for waxall parkway so if you can unravel that one for us. Sure, so this one's gonna take a little bit more description. So let me first tell you about what we're going to talk about during this presentation before we really dive into it. So tonight, staff is presenting information pertaining to the Comprehensive Transportation Plan, or CTP process, and proposed amendments in the CTP alignments for Waxhaw Parkway. Note that there is not an action to endorse the alignment, rather staff is seeking the board approval to initiate the CTP amendment process to consider a new alignment for the Waxhaw Parkway. This presentation will additionally provide insight into the historical changes in the parkway alignment from 1992 to 2023 and will present the overall vision for a northern and southern and southern alignment of the corridor based on an NCDOT feasibility study and a separate origin destination study. If granted approval to initiate the CTP amendment process, staff will proceed with coordination with CRTPO, NCDOT, Mineral Springs, and Union County in accordance with the CTP amendment process. So that provides a brief overview. Now let's talk about it. So a lot of you may not know what the CTP is. It stands for Comprehensive Transportation Plan. This really represents the community's overall vision, their long-term vision for how local transportation network should, in, should evolve to serve its residents and employers in a growing region. Note that it includes multiple modes of transportation from highways or new roadways to pedestrian facilities, which include sidewalks and trails, bicycle facilities, public transportation, and rail. It is also important to note that the CTP does not include specific transportation projects or improvement schedules, but instead represents the status of completeness of the comprehensive transportation system that may be required to support anticipated growth and development. In essence, the CTP assesses the condition of the entire transportation network and serves as a framework for transportation planning at the local and regional scale. The CTP is required for all parts of North Carolina by general statute. It's governed by the Charlotte Regional Transportation Planning Organization, CRTPO, as CRTPO is the designated Metropolitan Planning Organization, MPO, for this area. Amendments and updates must be approved by both CRTPO and the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Here's our role in it. So based, so the town 
it's based in large part on locally adopted plans, as local jurisdictions, meaning the town, can implement improvements through local ordinance or capital projects. So one big question that we have, or that we get most frequently, is how does the CTP impact future transportation plans and projects? So again, the CTP is more of a vision. It's really a wish list, per se. It's not fiscally constrained. So it's not dependent upon money. It's more of what can we do to solve the problem and then move forward into the MTP and the TIP as far as funding and implementation. So the CRT, the CTP serves as a framework for selecting future transportation projects for the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, the MTP, which the MTP identifies the transportation projects prioritized for funding over the next 20 years. Once projects are in the MTP, projects are then selected to be placed in the Transportation Investment Program, TIP, that NCDOT uses to program projects for construction. And to simplify, there's three processes. First, we get the vision, the idea, onto the CTP. We then move forward into prioritization on the MTP, and then finally, development and construction on the TIP. But the CTP is the first process. There it is outlined again more for you. As I've stated previously, the CTP is not fiscally constrained as opposed to the MTP and TIP processes. The CTP is more of a planning level and is flexible for changes based on new information and conditions. So if there's changes in the comprehensive plan, the pedestrian plan, parks and recreation plan, that can all be modified as a part of the CTP. So how might local jurisdictions like the town of Waxhaw implement the CTP? Well, ultimately the CTP strengthens connections between community vision, adopted land development plans, and transportation plans. Transportation <coughs> projects can then be built or improved as public construction projects, as public construction projects, or in conjunction with land development projects. CTP designations can help local jurisdictions develop, prioritize, and plan our local projects. In addition, the CTP can assist with coordinating transportation planning efforts that fall across multiple jurisdictions. CTP designations help these jurisdictions more clearly communicate the local transportation vision by including multiple transportation modes. Here's our impact. The local jurisdictions, us, the town of Waxhaw, can implement improvements through local ordinances or capital projects. For instance, the capital improvement plan, the CIP, or local ordinances that we have within the town. So here's the northern proposed amendment. This proposed amendment is based on a 2022 feasibility study conducted by NCDOT. In essence, we are shifting the existing CTP alignment shown in orange to the new alignment shown in purple. This will require coordination with CRTPO, NCDOT, Mineral Springs, and Union County. So in essence, it was over there to the east, we're shifting it closer to the west, which is actually more beneficial This is 
That's a lot to digest, isn't it? Yes. A lot of parts. 1992. Long time coming. Any questions, comments, thoughts? Again, we're looking at the process, which everything in government is a process. So if there are no questions, and we all understand where we're heading with the thing. I'm looking to look for a motion as well. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution RES 2023013 authorizing staff to initiate the CTP amendment process to consider a new alignment for the Waxar Parkway. Very good. Motion is up. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you, James. Good work. Thank you very much. All right, next item up is a resolution that's actually part of a process again as I talk about government process, long process, trying to work with um, current and past Union County Board Commissioners on keeping up with uh, the demands, if you will, for uh, our sewer. And this is in concert, actually, with some of our state elected officials at the uh, legislators' levels. They have been the one that we've been working with, and they have actually requested us to put forth this resolution, as they have with other municipalities who are working through that process right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see it. I'm going to read through it so we all understand it, and then we can talk about it after. So this is a resolution requesting the North Carolina General Assembly to create a new public utility district to manage the Union County Public Works Service Area. Whereas, the Union County Board of Commissioners, through its policies related to water and sewer service, have infringed on the Town of Waxhaw's ability to effective self-govern and implement comprehensive and strategic plans for the good of our citizens. And, whereas water and sewer treatment projects have long planning, design, and construction schedules, and delays cannot be remedied in a timely manner, which creates irreparable uh, economic development impacts to the town and its property owners. Whereas Union County Board of Commissioners has demonstrated an unwillingness to implement their capital improvement plan or to utilize their existing contracts and infrastructure with the city of Charlotte, deliberately creating utility scarcity that is a de facto moratorium and not in the spirit of North Carolina public enterprise and zoning regulations and a direct reversal of town and, and county coordination in good faith through respective comprehensive planning cycles. And whereas deferring maintenance and investment in capital projects can increase risks of environmental issues or excessive repair and maintenance costs, which could increase the burden to existing rate payers, payers and whereas the Union County Board of Commissioners demonstrated a lack of financial responsibility and prioritization of taxpayers' best interest by securing a bond for public higher education improvements that create a direct conflict with their current sewer service policy and by purchasing property with taxpayer money for required infrastructure as established in the county's master plan. And just weeks later, entering into a long-term lease of that property back to the seller for an amount below fair, value, fair market value and less than previous amount the seller had paid annually in property tax. Whereas the Union County Board of Commissioners reversal of policy of sewer infrastructure is adversely impacting the economic development of Union County, including the elimination of the ability for businesses to locate or expand in most areas served by Union County Public Works. Therefore, be it resolved that the town of Waxhaw hereby encourages the North Carolina General Assembly to eliminate the crisis in our county created by the Union County Board of Commissioners by enacting legislation which will, number one, require the Union County Board of Commissioners to direct and fund, if necessary, Union County Public Works to immediately utilize the existing contract with the City of Charlotte to send up to three million gallons per day of sewer flow to Charlotte's McAlpine Creek treatment plant, thereby, prov thereby providing the ability for new customers in the 12 Mile Creek Basin. Number two, require the Union County Board of Commissioners to follow its adopted master plans for water and sewer. Number three, create a new public utility district to manage Union County Public Works Service Area that would be governed by all of the governing bodies within Union County Public Works Service Area. This would be, in, in effect, uh, adopted this day. This has not been a short process. We've been working on this with the commissioners, uh, both past and current for the past two years. And frankly, 
I think many of the boards around us have lost confidence in the Board of Commissioners' willingness and ability to not only put a system in place and maintain it, but to expand it as necessary. Again, this is uh, recognized by the state legislators that we've talked to. They recognize that met with the county, recognized the county did not have a plan. So we are asking uh, for this of the legislators right now. So with that, I will open it up to any discussion from the commissioners. Must have been well written. It was very well written. All right, so with that, if there are no comments, thoughts by the commissioners, I'm going to look for a motion on this. I'll make the motion requesting, uh, I'll make the re for resolution RES 2023014 requesting the North Carolina General Assembly to create a new public utility district to manage the Union County Public Works Service Area. All right, that motion is up. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. A lot of work has gone into this one. So thank you very much. We we'll look forward to, uh, to moving that forward uh, as we can. All right, we have uh, nothing on the agenda tonight for closed session, so I'm going to move down to the town leadership reports. Town Manager Jeffrey Wells, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two things. Just another reminder that the shred day has been rescheduled to Saturday, June 24th. That was our rain date. Saturday, June 24th, same location here at Waxhaw PD, 9 a.m. till noon or until two trucks get full of shredded material. The town campus project is moving along well. If you've driven by there in the last few days, you've probably noticed the staking for the town hall building. And so if weather permits, you should see footers uh, being poured probably within the next week or two. And so we're looking forward to that. And then they'll continue to do some more uh, ground prep out there not long after that. And they'll be starting on the uh, what we call the PSPR building as well, Public Services, Parks and Rec. That metal building should be going up within the next couple of months. And probably sometime in June or at the worst July, you'll see vertical on the town hall as well. So looking forward to that project continuing to progress uh, well. That's all I have this evening. Very good. A lot going on in our town. A lot of things now coming onto the ground, which is uh, very exciting to see. All right, next up, Chief Collins, welcome back. Thank you. I, uh, I've been told I've talked so much that the batteries may be dead this thing, but I'm not scared to touch it. So I'm, have to pass it. I'm going to bet a red light's back. There you go. That went on. All right, let's see the. Uh, we good? I can just project. Better. All right. Good. All right. I only got a couple things. So I um, figured it was about time for a crime report since we're ending, getting pretty close to the end of April. Uh, year to date, we've had a 38% reduction in violent crimes, five total for the year, and a reduction of 50% in property crimes, 28 for the year. Uh, talking about staffing, currently we're at 28 sworn officers, one in basic law enforcement training two vacancies and four applicant, applicants currently in background stage of the hiring process. Uh, those four applicants, one would be a lateral officer from a local department. We have a nurse that's applied, a fitness instructor who's about to graduate from college, and a detention officer. These four would be hired after the start of the new budget year for the four allocations I mentioned earlier. Uh, recruiting and retention, uh, we'll be seeing the video here in a few minutes that we're rolling out. Uh, yesterday, like the mayor mentioned, uh, me and the mayor and Ms. McMillan were there uh, to meet with attorney Josh Stein. I uh, advertised as an opiate uh, conversation and we spent probably three quarters of the time talking about recruiting and retention. Uh, I was pleased to see that most of the talk was actually about retention. Uh, everything you see in the news is all about recruiting and filling all these vacancies. Um, when I got a chance to talk, I did mention that that Waxhaw's in a unique position, as you just heard. We really don't have many vacancies. Uh, we want to keep that up. But listening to the Attorney General talk about the ideas that they've had at the state level, everything we're already doing as a town, career development plans, uh, rewarding officers for continuing their training and education, pay incentives, 
Uh, we did talk about uh, possibly the ability of adding uh, retiree medical insurance for the employee, which disappeared several years ago and I think has adversely impacted the law enforcement profession in the state. Uh, just several things like that. I think it was a, a good conversation and hopefully uh, the start of many more, but um, it's, it's good to be in the position that we're in. I will say that. It makes, makes policing a lot easier. Um, upcoming, we have the Queen City Steeplechase. If you didn't notice it out on the message board coming this Saturday, uh, we'll say we have two officers that are dedicated the, to traffic just here in the town. We're not actually assisting with the steeplechase outside of town, but we're going to have an officer posted at uh, 16 and 75 to clear the traffic through there as needed, and then one down at the split there at South Providence and 75 where the Circle K is. So they'll be there for the duration of the day and just direct traffic as needed to make sure everybody can get safely through there. And then on May 20th, it's the police department's open house, which I like to say is actually your open house. So come, come visit your house here on the 20th. Uh, starting at 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, I am told that Lieutenant Mulligan is going to be flipping uh, hot dogs on the grill. So uh, if you're daring, you come down and have a hot dog cooked by Lieutenant Mulligan. But the Explorers will be there, uh, Union County EMS, and the Waxhaw Fire Department will be there. And of course, we'll have some jumpy castles and things like that for the kids and stuff. But I think it's uh, everybody looks forward to it every year, so it'll be a fun event. Any questions or anything for me? It was nice to uh, be recognized by the Attorney General now knows where Waxhaw is because we were seemed to be well represented in that meeting yeah, yesterday. Senate wise we, we came out on top, I, I, I would agree, so uh, hopefully he can you know, shovel some money our way as well. That's great. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. Planning and Inspections Director Lisa Thompson. Lisa, welcome. You've been busy. Yeah, he broke them. Gone. Project. grab one of these mics and maybe have you come up and improvise here a little bit Just, uh, see if the red light goes on there hello right, okay there you go Just bring you can pick it up you can lift it okay not awkward at all okay I'm good so from 2020 to 2023 uh, the year of 2020 we had 340 oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> The year of 2020, we had 348 home starts, 2021, 343, 2022, we only had 143, and this year we're projected to have 36, so it's almost completely stopped. Um, however, building inspections revenue is still somewhat okay. We went from a million 39, we had a lot of projects over COVID 2021 jumped to a million 51. Um, but again, seeing those decline in housing in 2022, we're down to 780. And then um, 2023, we're projecting 720,000. We had um, eight projects that has come through the board. We've had two that have construction plan approval and sewer. We have zero that have started construction, and we've had zero home starts of all those new plans that have been approved. Um, for historic preservation, uh, the month of May is Historic Preservation Month. Uh, we are working with Tamiya, our digital marketing specialist. We're going to do some 
a series of posts to promote the story map oral history project and the recent facade grant work that we approved tonight. We hopefully can follow them along um, the provisions building and do a series of posts to keep the public updated on that. Um, HPC will be downtown at the Kaleidoscope Festival to help promote the preservation month. Planning staff will also be there. We'll um, highlight our draft land use plan projects, road projects, and trails um, during that festival. So come visit us. And then um, one project coming up at Alina uh, was the old Crescendo project that will probably come to you guys probably late July or August. Uh, we had a planning board preview last night. Um, it is posted online if anyone wants to see it. The, the, the plans are also on the website. Um, we're waiting for that traffic impact analysis and it's a big one so that's what's taking so much time once we have that information we'll start bringing it through the process that's all I have very good any questions a lot of work coming along it is uh, interesting the impact of a 20-year build out of projects and how they go cyclical uh, for us in the town here so uh, look to uh, have an improvement on that as we go along as well so thank you Lisa Next up, Chief Greg, the other part of Greg Squared. <laughs> he squared? I'll, I'll let you say that. You guys can argue that later. So you get this Ooh, chance. Chief to Sharp, you can go to the podium. Oh, got you a <laughs> Someone found batteries. <laughs> How's that? We have the clicker here. Do you need that at all, by chance? Yes. No, since uh, Chief Collins is an admitted long-winded talker, uh, <laughs> clearly he attempted to get everybody else to sit so he could just stand and, and present himself. I'll be brief. Um, just to keep you updated, uh, we had three firefighters graduate from Moran Cabarrus Fire Academy a couple of weeks ago. They were in orientation. They're part of our firefighter apprentice program where they go through the academy, we, we pay them, and if they stick with us, they get a bonus six months out and a year out and they're in line for any full-time openings that we have. Uh, we have a strategic planning study underway by some consultants that is wrapping up and should be to us probably the middle of May with presentations. Um, and then the feasibility study we've talked about should start end of May, 1st of June. Uh, let's see, I'm heading to Raleigh next Wednesday to speak with our North Carolina representatives about uh, EOC grant money. Uh, for a future station on Kensington Drive, as, long, as well as support for our Safer Grant um, and that kind of stuff. And that wraps us right into the Safer Grant. It, is, it is, has been submitted. Uh, thank you to the town staff for helping and collaborating with that and getting that done and submitted. Um, it's a big grant. It's asking for $5 million for 27 firefighters over three years. There is no match to that. It's all federal money. Um, we're wrapping up our first Safer Grant with our 12 career firefighters. Uh, so it's been very successful for, to, for us, and uh, letters of support have gone out to Representative Bishop. Uh, I've been in touch with Senator Ted Budd's office, and I've met with Senator Tillis's staff uh, to discuss that as well. So we are pushing forward to serve this community as best we can. And doing a great job at that, so appreciate you being here. Thank Any you. questions, comments? All right. We'll turn the mic over to somebody else huh, who's got the clicker, too. There you go. Yeah, you're up. Our comms team, Jenny Buco. Good evening. All right, so you can hear me. Okay. Thank you, Joe, in the back, fixing everything. For those of uh, uh, that don't know who I am, a lot of new faces here, which I love seeing because, you know, our meetings are never crowded, so this is awesome. I'm Jenny Buchholz, the communications director for the town of Waxhaw and also the CEO and founder of Haven Creative. This is really cool. I've been serving the town of Waxhaw for eight years this, this May. So it's pretty exciting to talk about what we do. Basically, in a nutshell, we take all that alphabet soup that you heard earlier, MTP, TIP, and, to, and simplify it so that it makes sense on social media and on our website. So if you can't find anything and something doesn't make sense, please send communications at waxhaw.com. Send us an email. Let us know what you want to hear about or what you're not finding. As mentioned earlier, we recently hired a digital marketing specialist. This is part of our long-term plan to build out our internal team for the town of Waxhaw. So when there is officially a town hall, you'll get a communications director at some point. 
comm specialist, PR, media, and all that. But right now, Tamiya is handling the website updates, the HubSpot, the social media, monitoring, responding, and so forth. Every year we set communication goals. This is important for us because it holds us accountable and so you know what we're working on. So when we come in each quarter, we talk about what we're working on, what we're doing as it relates to these annual goals. We then break those down into monthly targets. So we have bucketed themes each month. So we talk about Team Waxaw, we talk about growing forward, the projects that are happening, the quality of life and community. We talk about the events that are happening and we've done a lot of spotlights on our Team Waxaw and you'll see more of that as we go into ramping up promotions for Waxaw 101, which I also encourage everyone who might be here and don't know about it. Waxaw 101 is our citizen engagement program to learn more about what happens all inside of Waxhaw, meet all of our department directors, really get a feel for how we operate as a town. And we'll be accepting application for that starting in June. So what's happening right now, we have the projects in process. We are overhauling the budget booklet. In the past, it's been a long 130 pages of narrative and under Jeff's direction, we are redesigning that and hopefully making it more readable, more understandable, and breaking out those ac acronyms and alphabet soup to make it more understandable. Um, we're also working on an information booth. So when you come and see us at the Kaleidoscope Festival, please come and visit us in the town booth. There's gonna be 10 to 15 different posters talking about the CIP, which stands for Capital Improvement Projects and Program. Um, so there'll be a lot of things happening, all of those updates over there. We also are talking about the grants projects and development projects and ways to get involved in our um, programs. We also have been working on the Waxhaw Police Department recruitment campaign, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. And then, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be doing Waxhaw 101 marketing and hoping to make that more video focused and highlight reels and highlighting the staff. So one of the recent changes is our Waxhaw Happenings newsletter. Uh, when I started out eight years ago, we used to have a 28 page newspaper that went out to our community. We realized that that was very time consuming and costly, so we transitioned that into a digital format. You can sign up for this newsletter on the website. There's already a pop-up that comes up as soon as you land on waxaw.com. What happens is you're enrolled into this happenings newsletter and you'll receive it monthly. When we started out, we had roughly 800 contacts. Now we're up to 1,800. Our average open rate is 40%, and our read rate, meaning they view the email for more than eight seconds, which believe it or not is actually long in today's world, is 77%, so we're happy with that. We're continually adding new content to that newsletter. The Chief's Corner is the new piece of content under Chief's direction. He wanted to add this, and I thought it was a great idea to kind of give our community an update on what's happening and how are we looking with safety and programs happening in our community. So the Waxall PD recruitment campaign, I wanted to highlight this. This is also Chief Collins's call out. He wanted to talk about how good people really make great cops. So that became the narrative that we're using and we've created a design for that that you'll see on our social media pages and throughout the recruitment campaign. So we have the social posts, we have print collateral that we're doing and we created a dedicated website landing page. So we purchased waxallpd.com. So now anyone can go directly there and directly into the form and watch the video that we produced. And I wanna make sure everyone understands before you see this video, it is not fast action, guns and shooting and SWAT team like you would see maybe at Monroe Police Department, sorry Monroe, but we're not that. We really wanted to highlight our quality of life and that coming to Waxhaw is close to Charlotte so you get that metro metropolitan feel, but we're not, we're just close enough. We still have this nice quiet quality of life. And so that's what we highlighted in this video. And I wanted to talk about that if you wanna come up to you and add anything to the video before I play it. You kind of stole my thunder with the it's not an exciting video. There's a little bit of that in there, but um, I'll just ask kind of the obvious question. I just got done talking about how fully staffed we are. We've got four people going through background and all that kind of stuff. Why in the world would we do a, a recruiting campaign and video? Well, we know our attrition rate is 3.7 officers per year over the last four years. So we can count on losing almost four officers over the next year, which puts us flat. We haven't gained anything. So instead of just recruiting when we're short, we're gonna be recruiting all the time and trying to hire the best people. And that way, when we do get an extra allocation or we have a retirement or someone goes to the private sector, we can pull the cream of the crop right off the top. Uh, what makes us different than these other towns is what you're gonna see here on this video. 
Take it away, Joe. Are you looking you to gotta, be part of Joe, something bigger, screen, in a place that show. feels like home? You'd be hard-pressed to find any place better than Wax On North It's the man behind the curtain. There he goes. And then click the bottom right, so thank you. Are you looking to be part of something bigger, in a place that feels like home? You'd be hard-pressed to find any place better than Wax On North Carolina. From the iconic overhead train bridge to the rustic downtown, it truly is a picturesque community that's home to roughly 22,000 residents. The Wax Hall Police Department is committed to serving our citizens and guests by providing a safe and peaceful environment, rendering aid to those in need, and by protecting their lives, property, and rights. We invest in our employees by providing training, equipment, and resources to meet that demand head-on. This includes a 26,000 square foot police building with all the amenities you could want. A spacious gym for staying in shape. A dedicated jujitsu training room. And a state-of-the-art virtual simulator. We take community policing to the next level. Every officer adopts a neighborhood in Waxhaw so we can focus on the things that truly matter to our residents. Collaborating with our schools to make them safe. Dropping in at the skate park. Or just stopping to talk with someone. We create relationships and provide support to our residents and businesses. This is what builds a strong community like Waxhaw. Waxhaw may already be home for you, or maybe you're looking for a place to call home. Either way, we believe that good people make great cops, and we're looking for more good people to join our family. Yes. So, just a quick call out for all the Parks and Rec staff that joined that video and our citizens, business owners here that made highlights, my son, my house, my, my skateboarding husband. Uh, we just appreciate all the talent that was lent to us to get that done. It took a, it took a community. <laughs> so, um, cost down. I kept the cost down. That's <laughs> true. Gotta save money. Um, last and least, I just wanted to throw out there because I think it's fun. Haven just won um, the Best of the Best Charlotte Best Ad Agency, and we're really proud of that. And thank you for this community and for all of you for believing in us and voting for us to be your ad agency. So thank you. That's a long way from where you started, so that's great. Thank you very much for that. All right. Any comments? We'll kind of move it down a little bit. Any comments from the commissioners? I know they probably want to get back. I've got to head up to Concord, so if there's no other comments, I'm going to look for a motion to adjourn. Oh, motion to adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> all in favor? <laughs> Aye. All right. Good night, everybody, and thank you, everybody, for doing all your homework on all the things that we've talked about tonight. Appreciate the staff, and i got to say I've gotten good comments uh, from uh, people in the uh, – the program that I'm in this week on our website, actually. So, gotta say, we're we're recognized. So, thanks to everybody. Good night.